Hello and welcome. This is Kaylin, and you're listening to From the Valley, a podcast about Christ, community, and cultivating our lives. This is our very first episode, so I am super excited. I wanted to begin podcasting for our church as a way to encourage our community and also to keep connected with each other. So, without further ado, today, episode one, More Than the Bible, with special guest, Pastor Tom Anderst. Well, welcome, PT. Thanks for coming in to Mm. talk with me. This is our first ever episode, so that just means you have to set the bar really high for everyone else. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So I'd love uh, to start if you would just tell us a little bit about you, about yourself, and what you do here at Sturgeon Valley Baptist Church. Sure. Um, I have been pastor here for 16 years now, started in January of 2006, and I've been a pastor for 32 years, I believe, 33 years now. Um, started in 1989, so that was like before the internet. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, way, way back in the past. So, um, yeah, I've been a Christian for 50 years. Um, I became a Christian when I was eight, so you can do the math there of how old I am. Um, on uh, Boxing Day, my uh, sister led me to Christ. Um, I, we had been going to church for all my life, but I hadn't really received Christ. And that began the journey of uh, walking with Christ with different ebbs and flows of uh, my life and my passion for Christ. Um, But uh, I am very thankful for his calling on my life to enter into the ministry, Uh, but most important for the Lord being in my life. And uh, so that's what I try to pass on to others as I uh, minister and as I live, uh, that their ultimate resource and the ultimate hope that we have is Christ himself. And so that's kind of what I've tried to focus on in my mission and point people to Christ in uh, in my ministry. So um, yeah, that's that's a bit about me. And so right now at Sturgeon, I've, uh, I'm kind of the preaching pastor and the senior pastor which who works with our elders and our deacons and just overseeing the church. Uh, We look after vision, um, uh, pastoral care or shepherding of the the flock, and the deacons look after the operational things. So I enjoy working with them and appreciate all that they do. And then I'm the staff leader as well. So I think that's all that I can think of right now of what what goes on here and what I do. Um, But yeah, it's been quite the journey so far. That's really fantastic. Mm. Yeah, he's a he's a good leader, guys. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like talking to my boss right now. So, <laughs> but it's very cool to have you here. And when I first started talking about doing a podcast and when I was pitching this idea, uh, you seemed right away to know something that you're passionate about that you wanted to talk about mm-hmm. to come on and to discuss and so would you share a little bit about about that, about this idea about the Bible and our, our personal relationships with Christ. Sure. Um, I, I know that I will often say as a, po- as a pastor that uh, vital to the Christian life is reading the Bible. But I think that um, why that matters and how it can really make a difference is a struggle for a lot of us for different, for different reasons. I, I know in my own life, I did not start um, anything close to personal devotions or reading the Bible until I was 19 years of age. So even though I grew up in the church, so it was a, a long time coming for me. And then even after that, I, I, I really struggled to um, kind of get some things of the Bible or see how it was relevant. And so part of, uh, part of the way that God's instructed me, changed me, is, is through His Word— and uh, through the things that he's taught me over the years, and I, I, I believe my role is to pass on to others this incredible eternal resource that we have in the Bible and how to connect with God that way. And uh, yet I see you know, people struggle in, in that. So I feel like there's a lot to be said 
and that we can maybe talk more about what does it really look like to connect with God through the Bible? Because mm. just saying read, read the Bible, well, yeah, yeah, we can we can do that, but so what? So what does that mean, or what? How does that actually impact our day to day lives? So that's part of the reason why Bible reading has changed my life dramatically. Um, so that's another reason that I'm passionate for it. When I started to seriously read the Bible, so many things fell into place for me about understanding God and his character and all of that. And I just felt, wow, I've got to pass this on. So that's part of my reason for passion for for the word. So you said that people often struggle with reading the Bible. Have you seen in your ministry that there are specific things with Bible reading that people struggle? Mm -hmm. I think that there's a few things. Uh, one thing is I think that we can treat Bible reading like a, um, um, a task list, like one item on our task list. So we read a passage, we check it off, and we're done. Mm. And um, that then it's no wonder that we can... Um, find it almost irrelevant and just like a thing to get over with, like a chore, you know? So I think, I think the lack of interaction with what we've read is, is huge. Um, and I, I did that myself for, I'd pick up my Bible, I'd read and put it down and not, if we don't do something with what we've just read, I think it can be a pretty fruitless exercise. Of course, God can speak through his word and, and, you know, stop us. But I think that just like when you're relating to another person, you kind of, uh, you speak and then they respond. And, and we have to look at Bible reading more as an interaction with God rather than reading a textbook. And I think mm. that's kind of what we, how, how we sometimes approach God's word is, this is just like reading a textbook. This is the thing I got to do as a Christian. So I'm just going to check off the box today. So I think that's one one thing is this lack of response or interaction with it after we're done reading. And another thing is the Bible is um, is in some ways hard. There's um, a lot of different liter literary types in the Bible, and we're not used to them, and so they seem foreign to us. And then it's kind of distant and kind of hard and and uh, technically our Bible reading is not like required, like our job or like our school courses. So if it's hard and we have other stuff to do, it can be easier to put it off. And so there's some obstacles or things that we have to grow in to be able to overcome those obstacles to begin to love God's word. So that, that's, I think, another thing. And um, I think, I think a a, a big obstacle as well is we don't, we may not know the big story of the Bible, so we read something and we just can't see how it fits into anything or how it matters. We know, you know, the disconnected stories. We know Daniel maybe in the lion's den or David and Goliath, but what does that really have to do with my life today? Um, and if we don't know the big story of the Bible overall, like what is God doing, then it can just seem like a bunch of disconnected readings really and so then it it maybe is a little bit further for us and then on top of that we have all the differences between us and the culture that we're reading about and the people there and so some of it's really weird to us so we're like what is this and in some passages it looks like god is doing some weird stuff or wrong stuff and we're like how can that be so i think all of these things can contribute to our hesitation or obstacles to actually reading the bible and then of course you know it's attacked and mocked by the world and so then you're kind of like yeah like why would i read it so i think those are some of the things that can kind of hinder our, our desire and and even our efforts to try to read yeah god's word that way yeah, definitely. That's a <laughs> a lot of different points. Uh, I'm going to circle back to to one of the first things you said was that Bible reading is is like having a relationship with another person in a yeah. way, in where we talk to the person, and yeah. then we also have to wait for a response. Yeah. And so I think that's, at least personally, I find that something very strange mm -hmm. in having a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. In that 
he we can't see him we can't feel him the same way we do other people so with bible reading how do we go about like building this relationship how how can we use reading a book as a way to i guess one to talk to him but then also to listen to what he has to say i for me uh Adding a journal to my Bible reading has been key, and I've been doing that for probably uh, maybe 35 years now. Um, And basically all I do is I write the date down, and then as I read, I will write down maybe a verse or two that sticks out to me. And then... After that, um, I might just respond in prayer to that verse. Oh, Lord, thank you for revealing to me again today that your mercies are new to me this morning. Or, wow, Lord, (laughs) this, this verse sure points out something that I've been struggling with and I really need to, you know, stop that or I need to address that. Or sometimes... It's just a verse that sticks out, and then I will write down, um, I've been doing this more, say, in the last year, but a question like, Lord, what do you want me to see here? And I then uh, spend time quietly trying to listen and trying to um, wait for for the Lord to speak. And it's not some weird thing that happens that, you know, all of a sudden my hand gets... You know, this force takes control of my hand and I start writing God's words down. No, but it, I, I think there's something to God impressing something on our spirits of what he's trying to say. And I I sense that that's, that's part of it. And then all of a sudden, um, this practice of reading the Bible becomes like an encounter with God. I experience God in this. I've, I'm, I'm reading his word and... I'm responding to his word, and then I'm hearing further from him in, in, in doing that. One thing that really struck me, I don't know, a few years ago, was uh, I was reading about in Exodus uh, 19 and 20 when the Lord was speaking to Moses and the people at Mount Sinai. And this, wherever I was reading it, this commentator said, um, at Sinai, the medium of communication between the Lord and the people was the air because they could hear his voice. They could hear his voice. Moses Mm -hmm. could hear his voice. So the medium of communication was, was that like, that's how God's communication got to those people was through the air because they could actually hear it. And then the, the, the writer said, and today, a lot of times, like most of the time, that's the Bible. And all of a sudden to me, it was like, whoa, like it's, it's obvious, but it's, God can speak to me through his word. Of course, I know that, but it didn't resonate with me, I guess. And I just realized how much I'd been treating the Bible like, I don't know, something I had to do rather than a primary way of God communicating with me. And so that really opened up my walk with him a bit a bit more. And I still struggle. Uh, there's times where I'll I'll do things, and I, I will honestly write down, I didn't really see much in here today, Lord, or I, I don't know what you want me to see, which is okay. Um, but I, for me, uh, writing down and responding to something that I've read really helps. And it, it's like, I think there's a brain thing in that too, that if you just read your textbook compared to writing some things down as you read, your memory is like way greater, right? So generally for people and and it just helps me uh, take in a little bit more of what I'm reading and and I think that the other thing about that that's important too is it's not I'm just not reading to check off a box I'm reading to know God and to go into my day with what he has shared with me or said to me so uh, that that often that often helps as well have you found like what would you say to people who do feel that way that well right now Bible reading is just, you know, I I know I'm supposed to do it. I know, you know, that checking off the box kind of attitude and they want to do it, but it feels like checking off a box. How do you go from that to then encountering 
God? Like, is Mm. there, like, what can you do to have that kind of mental switch? Uh, I think, well, that's a great question. I think that's um, a reality for a lot of us at different times. One thing I think is vital is asking God for the desire. So I think that there's so much opposition to us reading the Bible spiritually and just in our own walk that we underestimate it. We underestimate it and we think, oh, you know, I really, if I could, I could just do this if I had a little bit more willpower. And yeah, willpower is part of it, but I mean, the devil does not want us to read God's word. Okay. So let's not underestimate that. And then there's so many distractions, um, that can keep us from it as well. And we're tired and we're not maybe as focused or whatever. So to ask God, will you please give me a desire? Hmm. Give me a desire to read your word, to not just read your word, to interact with you through your word. And sadly, one of the biggest motivators for me has been trials in my life. So I can let my Bible reading and my interaction with God slip. But then when tough stuff comes along, wow, I find this great motivation to go to the Bible. Why is that? Because like I'm desperate. I'm struggling. I need answers. I need encouragement. I need hope. So sadly, trials can sometimes be a great, that that can be a great benefit of them. They kind of drive us to God. And sadly, that's how so many of us work. Um, But when we're not undergoing a trial, Um, I think we pray and ask God for that hunger, for that desire. And the more that we uh, engage with him, I I think that that creates this satisfaction and we begin to believe it. This is not just a chore. This is not just a task. Like, he is my life. He's my living water, you know, so I I, I need to go there. So that's a bit of what's happened to me, I think. But I think those are a couple of things. So trials, they come use them. Don't waste them is what someone wrote. Don't waste your trials. And, uh, and then pray and ask. Interesting. You know, I've got this uh, running joke that never pray for patience. Yeah. (laughs) You've probably heard this too. Never pray for patience because, because God doesn't give you patience. He gives you scenarios in which to practice your patience. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it's a little bit like that with our trials and, and praying for, you know, yeah. <laughs> strength to read the Bible or, yeah. or those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so you've found that journaling really helps. Have you found any anything else along that journey? Uh, I, I found sometimes I've listened to the Bible. Um, so I think that, and that's a good thing. I think there's so many, it's way easier today than it used to be to listen to the Bible and to have someone else, you know, read it for us. So I think there's value in that. And uh, the Bible was meant to be listened to um, a lot of times, too. It was written to be listened to. A lot of the things are for public settings. And uh, there's a lot of talk in the Bible about being a hearer, like listening and listening well. Um, So I think I think that's an important thing. Bible study together with others is good. Like that's stimulating too. When you can get in a group and talk about the Bible, well then that can often stimulate us to go a little bit more, uh, a little deeper on certain things or rate. Well, I don't think that's what that was saying. And and say, what does it really say? I think that uh, podcasts can be great. If you find good podcasts with people talking, uh, good podcasts with people talking about, about pieces of the Bible or interpreting sections or explaining, uh, listening to good messages can be another uh, great stimulant. I think we um, maybe can be a bit hard on ourselves sometimes and think, you know, the only way that I can interact with God is through Bible reading alone. Mm. And uh, I think it's great in the community to come together. And you see that in the early community of the church too. They would devote themselves to the apostles' teaching. So what does that mean? And maybe it's, you know, you hear the teaching and then you talk about it. And you think about how could we live this out in our lives, you know? So sometimes maybe maybe Bible reading alone doesn't work for some of us. I think it's still important, and uh, we kind of have to do that, even if it's not our favorite thing to do. But if if, if it works better to do, do it with someone else, then do it that way. 
you know, and, and encourage each other that way. I think that can be, that can be a good thing too. For me, um, you know, I, I, I like to tell Lori this, my wife, um, when I started Bible reading, I would often do it after I had done my other stuff around breakfast or so read the news and watch this and that, and then Bible reading and kind of, and sometimes I wouldn't get there ever. And it's totally flipped in the last say 10 years or so where oftentimes I'll just do my Bible reading and interaction with God and I don't get to the other stuff because God is my source of life. <laughs> He's my, uh, hope and all the things that I, I need are found in him. And so I, I found this, this, uh, soul quenching, um, satisfaction in him. So, uh, it's been so neat to see how he, how he's done that. So you mentioned a little bit earlier about how people don't necessarily see the whole picture of the Bible and that can make it very hard. I find for me, especially sometimes in the old Testament I'm reading and I'm like, what does this have to do with mm -hmm. anything? Like why, mm -hmm. <laughs> why, why is this person talking about this? How does this, you know, relate to God or to Jesus? Mm -hmm. Do you have any recommendations for kind of working that into the big picture of the Bible? Any resources or any ways that you mm -hmm. study that helps, I don't know, kind of move through that instead of just ignoring that piece that you don't understand? Yeah. Um, about a few years ago, we did a series here called, uh, I think it was called Read the Bible for Life or something like that. And that's, those messages are still on the website and they walk through the storyline of the Bible, basically, using the different literary types. I think that the Bible Project does a pretty good job. Uh, their, their theme statement is, um, we believe the Bible is a unified story leading to Jesus. And that's, that's great. And, and again, I always have to like qualify these statements. So I don't agree with everything that the Bible project says, or that Tim Mackey, the, the guy on there says, okay, I don't agree with all of, every bit of his theology, but I think that, that they do a really good job of helping, uh, people who don't know the Bible to at least get acquainted with it. And they do all their stuff on with videos. Mm, like, these so, are the YouTube guys, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. And it's all free. And they do like really high quality stuff, really high quality. So you can watch on, on the Bible Project an outline of every book of the Bible while it's being drawn graphically in front of you. So it's kind of like it's narrated and drawn. And that's just a great introduction, I think, to, to the Bible. And... Uh, um, and then that can help, help us get the basic, the basic storyline of, of what's going on. And I think a storyline just helps us with those tough parts, like of the old Testament you're talking about, like, why am I Leviticus? Like what, why <laughs> is that, that here? How does it even fit? And you begin to see, okay, so here God is teaching them about, about life and about sacrifice and different things like that. And you begin to see the foundation being set for the sacrifice of, of Christ and that they're learning about that through the sacrificial system and all this stuff uh, begins to fit into a bigger picture. So, um, yeah. And Bible, you know, some, some Bibles have good, uh, study Bibles, I guess you would call them, have some good overall stuff. ESV study Bible is, is pretty good that way. And again, um, any study Bible uh, will have its theological perspective. Uh, so Bible study notes are not inspired, the Bible is, <laughs> but uh, sometimes people think the Bible study notes are as inspired as the Word. They're opinions. They're yes. opinions and interpretations. They're, they can be very helpful. Um, but but any, either of those, any of those is, I think, a good, good uh, place to find uh, that big story picture. Hmm. Yeah, I really like that. I, I need to watch some more Bible Project stuff. I really like their videos, mm -hmm. and they're very mm -hmm. entertaining mm -hmm. and yet very, like, Christ-focused in a lot of ways. And, like, yeah. look where this is going. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I've seen a few of them. They're really neat. Yeah. yeah. So all of this, um, you said you've really seen this impact your own Christian life and mm -hmm. your walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. How has reading the Bible in this way as an encounter with God, how has that impacted your life? 
Well, I think the first thing that happened was I had not read the Bible through, and I've told this story in different contexts before. Even when I was in seminary, I had not yet read the Bible through in its entirety until um, I was at a men's breakfast, and then I read the Bible through that day. No, of course not. <laughs> I um, heard this guy talk about how he'd read the Bible through 10 times before he was 17, and his parents helped him with that. I'm thinking, that is, wow, you can you can do that? You can You can read the Bible through and stuff. So I just thought, wow, I got to do that. I'm going into the ministry. I should not you know, get to learn the Bible here. And I started to do that and I could not believe how many things fit together. I could not believe how, <laughs> sounds dumb now, how smart God is. <laughs> I couldn't believe how these things from the Old Testament were, were so amazingly fulfilled in the New Testament. So the first time, the first bit of actually reading through the Bible was just God um, convincing me, showing me the vastness of his wisdom, knowledge, and redemptive plan. And I'm getting, like, it really bolstered my faith. I was scared. I was scared for probably 10 years after I graduated from high school that the faith was not solid. Hmm. And I lived with some guys who were great guys, just great guys, and also really challenged my faith. With, with some really hard questions that I didn't have answers to. And I thought, man, I, I don't know. And so I would just like try to ignore those things. And then when I started to read the Bible through, so many things got answered. So it was, it was a great faith strengthening experience. And then I've just found through the years that as I've continued in this or grown in this, that God has uh, really sustained me. Um, a lot of times through very hard, hard things, um, through that this time with the Lord, you know, and he'll speak to me with some verse of encouragement. Uh, I, I still remember one time I was really worried about stuff, um, something, can't remember what it was. And the Bible reading that day was John 14, first verse, do not let your heart be troubled. Mm. And uh, I believe that when that happens, it's not a coincidence. I think I was off the plan or off the date reading. You know, maybe I, I, it was it was Thursday and I was I hadn't done Tuesday's reading yet. And yet that Thursday I needed that message, do not let your heart be troubled. And I saw God do that again and again and bring these verses and and bring, you know, comfort and assurance and all that through my through my through desperate times, you know. So um, I, I think just the way that God has carried me through His, through His Word and through those encounters, um, has has really encouraged me. And then and then when you see that happen, uh, I I find I have more desire to know God, um, not just as a, a rescuer when times are tough, but as as uh, my sustainer and my source of wisdom and. Um, life and and counsel all these things like like he's this in, in, infinite resource uh so not that i just go to god for what i can the resources because he himself is my life but but uh, there is so much to be received from him so i'd say those are those are some things i mean wisdom in parenting in marriage god's spoken to me you know through our times together and and not weird out there stuff where, you know, I see writing on the wall literally or anything like that, just, just these impressions, just through his, through a, through a verse, but something, I, I've heard this from other Christians too, where they read the same passage and all of a sudden this verse jumps out, but, and it didn't jump out last time. And I think that's the spirit working, you know, as we read to draw us our attention to, you know, what we see or need to see. So that's just some of the some of the ways that God has has worked in my life um, through the through this, and and that's what I want to try to pass on to people, is wow this can really be your hope and and a great encouragement to your life. Um, you won't always have a have a certain pastor around or a certain teacher around. You have to, God, but God's given you this great resource to commune with Him, you know, and and it, you can't just depend on other people to do that. For, for you ultimately. It's it's as we grow and mature, we have to do that ourselves, uh, relate to God ourselves, and then 
with the other people that God entrusts into our lives, whether it be children or or other apprentices or other people that he calls us to influence, we then can kind of pass that on to others as well. So just, yeah, it's, uh, I, I just have a passion for trying to make the Bible more accessible mm-hmm. um, to people. And, uh, and, and it seems like there's these humps or obstacles in different people's lives. And so I just try to share a bit of that, I guess. That's really fantastic. Mm. And so if people have questions uh, will they be able to get a hold of you and ask you some questions? Yeah, I would love that. Of course, anytime. Um, well, let's see, 2 a.m. on a, maybe not 2 a.m., <laughs> but um, so yeah. So that's your limit, like yeah. midnight and midnight then that's it. Midnight to 3, I need. <laughs> so um, don't call PT at 2 a.m. <laughs> and ask him questions about the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah. He'll right. be oh, Of course, you know, email, um, text, uh, face-to-face on Sundays, Um Wow, I, I would love to talk about this, and um, I I probably should talk about it more. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And all of your details are on the Sturgeon Valley Baptist Church website, correct? Uh, yeah, I believe they are. So if anyone's looking to get a hold of PT, uh, you can check out svbc.ab.ca, and you can scroll. We've got a whole staff section, and you can... You can find him, and then you can call him at 2 a.m. and <laughs> ask him questions. <laughs> yeah, or leave a message on the answering machine, which yeah, will get that. it at 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Or he'll be like, why are these people? Yeah. <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. really, really great to have you. Thank you so much for coming in to, to talk with me. And I hope that this it can encourage people. It certainly encouraged me. Oh, good. You know, to yeah. get back. Got to gotta get read my Bible and, mm. and just use it as a way to to connect with God Mm -hmm. so yeah that's the big thing that's the yeah he uh he decided that uh we needed a book you know he wrote a book in a way or inspired people to write a book and so it's pretty important to take it up and take advantage of that I guess so yeah for sure thanks Kayla great yeah yeah thank you thanks for coming to talk okay it's great to have you thanks From the Valley is a Sturgeon Valley Baptist Church production. Subscribe to the podcast and be sure to join us in person or online every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our worship service. Details can be found at www.svbc.ab.ca. I'm Kaylin Ham. Thanks for listening.